to a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station is ready. National Air and Space Museum, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Leland in the Ascans at the National Air and Space Museum. How do you hear us? Leland and the Ascans, we hear you loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. You guys are looking great up there. Mike, you've been pumping some steel up there or something. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead, Mike. We're going to take some questions from the students here in the audience. Oh, so I was just going to say they make us do that. <laughs> you have to do that, right? Just keep your bones and your muscles in shape. So we're going to take some questions from the students. I think the students are going to be lining up now. Is that correct? We'll get them to line up, and, th and then we'll ask you two questions in space. What was the thing that got you so inspired when you were in middle school? Gosh, that's a long time ago, uh, Leland. I'm not sure if I can remember uh, middle school, but I certainly remember when I was in high school, it was the early days of the shuttle program and, and getting to watch uh, all of those launches that were happening every year. Uh, that's uh, definitely what inspired me about the, the space program and wanted, uh, what, uh, what uh, gave me the idea of becoming an astronaut someday. Fantastic. Rick, what about you? I know that was a really long time ago for you, but... Uh, <laughs> What was the thing that inspired you? <laughs> oh, I think I <laughs> – thanks, Leland. Hey, yeah, I do remember actually back in uh, when I was in sixth grade in that time frame, and uh, I remember whenever my teachers talked about space or talked about planets, uh, that would just uh, interest me to no end. It was my favorite subject, and, of course, I was always interested in airplanes and flying and things like that. So it just kind of naturally came together that I went and became an engineer, and then I – I decided to apply as an astronaut, and of course it took me many, many years, and it took me a lot of hard work, but eventually I did get selected. So it started at a very young age. It's just uh, a, an interesting subject for me. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, you guys, are you ready for some questions from some fantastic students from the, the D.C. metro area? Okay. Good would you please, We're ready. Would you please state your name and then ask the question, what school you're from? I'm from Friendship Blow Pierce. I'm in sixth grade. I would just like to ask, if, if you were not selected to be an astronaut, what other career would you have chosen? Okay. Well, that, that's a great question, and that's easy for me to answer because I was an engineer who worked at NASA, and I worked at NASA for nine years as an engineer, and then I worked in mission control. So if I did not become an astronaut, I would still be working for NASA. It's a fantastic place to work. It's got so many interesting jobs, not just astronaut. It has engineering jobs. It has uh, science, scientists, jobs for scientists, doctors, researchers, all kinds of folks. It's a great place to work. Great question. Um, my name is Nicholas, uh, and I'm from the Capitol Hill Day School, and I was wondering, what do you research on the space station? Yeah, Nicholas, that's a, uh, that's a great question, and there is a ton of research going on up here. In fact, during our increment, there's going to be over 200 experiments going on. And a lot of those experiments, they range from ones that we don't have a lot of involvement in, such as the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is looking for the origins of the universe. What we do do is help keep the station running, and it utilizes the power and the data and the communication streams to bring that data down to the ground. Then there's uh, experiments where we're more involved, so we're actually executing the experiments uh, in conjunction with the principal investigator down on the ground. So, for example, fluid flow 
uh, type experiments and how they move in different shaped vessels. That's another one that we'll work on. And then there's the experiments where we're very involved in because we're the guinea pigs. And uh, so there's a lot of those where we're trying to figure out what happens to the human body up in microgravity, such as our spines expand. And so we will do things like uh, we'll take ultrasounds of our spines. And again, that'll be working in conjunction with people on the ground that are going to take that data and analyze it. And hopefully that'll help us decide or learn how we can protect astronauts, uh, maybe one of you someday when we do a long duration flight to Mars or beyond. Great question. Next question. Hello, my name is Ajani, and I go to Jefferson Academy in Washington, D.C. And my question is, how different is the transition from being in space to coming back down to Earth on your body? Yeah, that's a good question. When we uh, launch and we arrive here on the space station, our body goes through a lot of changes. And then, of course, when we return back to Earth, our body goes through a lot of changes also. And so it's a, it's a good question. It's a toss-up on which is more difficult or which is harder on the body. I've been through both several times, and I can tell you, when we, when we land, the biggest uh, thing that I notice is I feel very dehydrated. We lose a lot of the fluids up here when we get into space because, our, because of the lack of gravity. A lot of the blood shifts to our head, and our body doesn't need all that fluid, so it, it, we, it really releases all the fluid by urinating more and just ev evaporation and sweating it out. Of course, when we get back to Earth, the gravity is back, so it pulls a lot of the blood back into our legs, and we need that fluid again. So I always feel very dehydrated. And, of course, your vestibular system, you feel dizzy. You feel like you've been kind of on a, a, a carnival ride for a few weeks. So it takes some time before you get your, you know, you're able to walk in a very stable. And, of course, your muscles and your bones have uh, atrophied or gotten weaker over, over a long period of time. But, of course, we exercise a lot to try to minimize that. So your body goes through quite a few changes either when you're on your way up or on your way down. Great question. Uh, hi, my name is Brooke Tewitt, and I, I go to the Bridges Academy, and I wanted to know how many levels of math would I need to take if I wanted to be an astronaut? <laughs> Every level you can find. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you definitely need to study uh, the math, the science, the engineering in school. Uh, most of us have a background uh, in that, uh, though there are, um, there are astronauts that don't have that, uh, that kind of a background. Uh, there's teachers out there. Uh, so a lot of people are, are involved uh, in the astronaut program, and, but math is certainly important, so I highly recommend uh, uh, keep studying it. That's a really good question. I'm, I'm Josie, I'm from Norwood School, and if you had a choice, what area in space would you like to explore? That is a great question. Where in space would we like to explore? Well, I think the moon is a great place to visit. Uh, it's very close to the Earth. It only takes three days to get there, and so if we want to visit or if there's a problem with the vehicle, we could send help. It's a great place to practice before we move on to more complicated or further places like Mars or, or asteroids and things like that. So I think the moon is a, is a good stepping stone. Great question. Jessica, do you have a question from Mike or Rick? Sure. So... This may apply to everybody. You know, all of us have worked really, really hard our whole lives to get here, and we've, of course, also had a lot of fun doing all the really cool things that we've been fortunate enough to do. But I guess the question is, you know, all this hard work and all this time and waiting, and for us that are going to wait so long, is it worth it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is definitely worth it. It is the most amazing experience that uh, I think you could ever have. Uh, you know, floating is, is truly incredible, and it never gets old. Um, it's something that even as we're working all day long, you, you, just, you just enjoy doing it. And, and it's something that it's uh, unfortunate that we don't get to experience more down on Earth. But it, it is truly incredible. The views of Earth are truly incredible. Uh, it is worth the wait. Fantastic. Okay, next question here from my... My friend right here. 
Come on up. Good morning. My name is Tony. I am a student at Friendship Blow Pierce. I want would like to ask you how did you feel when you were selected to be an astronaut? Good question. Well, that's a great question. When I was first selected as an astronaut, I could not even believe that it happened. I remember getting a phone call and uh, them telling me that I was selected as an astronaut. And I said, oh, great, thank you very much. And the phone call only lasted a few seconds. And then I remember a couple hours later wondering if I really got that phone call or was I dreaming. And I had to call the, uh, I remember I had to call Dwayne Ross, who works in the astronaut selection board. Say, hey, Dwayne, did I really get selected? He said, yes, Rick, you're not dreaming. So it was a very exciting time for me, and, uh, and I'll never forget it. And, and Mike and Rick, Dwayne Ross is actually here with us today. Good question, young man. Okay, so we're going to go to social media now. See okay. what questions are out there. Uh, so we have some great questions coming in, and we have one from Gregorio Paulin, who wants to know what does the space program hope to accomplish this year? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. I think there's going to be a huge uh, or a lot of accomplishments this year. Uh, again, all in those science arenas, I expect to see a, a lot of accomplishments there. You know, sometimes, though, the science, uh, the results from what we're doing up here take take a little time because we get we collect a lot of that data we send it down to the ground and and then the scientists they need to have time to look at that data to analyze it and to uh, to come up with some results on that so um, a lot of what we're doing you may not see the results for that until uh, two years from now and so you know there's going to be a lot of big accomplishments uh, just by keeping the uh, the space station running we've got more visiting vehicles that are going to be coming up here we've got uh, we just had orbital come up we're going to have SpaceX coming up soon then another other orbital. We've got Russian progress vehicles coming up, and I'm sure there's going to be some more EVAs that are going to be planned uh, this year as well. So it's uh, it's always busy, and I expect uh, a lot of great things are going to happen this year. Okay. Okay. Hey, I think we have another question from the Ask Ants here. Nick, you've got a question? Yeah. Hey, guys. I, I was wondering if you could... Um, Kind of share with the audience here we talked about working out and trying to prevent bone loss and muscle atrophy could you talk about some of the things that you did in terms of athletics growing up and, and maybe a little bit about what you have to do on station yeah that's a good question nick uh, i always said that uh Flying in space, space shuttle missions that I've done before, and now space station mission, it's a team event. It's a team sport. So I think it's very important growing up to play team sports, uh, football, baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, all those different sports. I think it's a, it gives you a big advantage to learn to uh, play with your teammates, to work with your teammates, to work together to achieve a common goal because that's what we do up here. It's exactly what we do up here. When you're on a mission, you're working with your crewmates, you're working with the folks on the ground, you're working with the scientists, and it's one big team, one big happy family, and you have to learn to work together. And the only way you're going to move forward and, and accomplish the goals is by working together. So I think it's a directly related the team sports and the uh, and the uh, the missions that we do. And growing up, I played uh, I played a lot of sports. I played football. I played basketball ball and uh, lots of different things mostly in the street with my friends but also some organized sports uh, in school great now Mike if we were up there together you know the wide receiver defensive back clash would be happening right now you know let's uh, take another question from social media yeah. you're going down <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure so we have a question for the candidates um, in the tradition of the question asked to the Mercury astronauts, which one of you will be the first in space? <laughs> which one? They're going, they're going as a team together? We're hoping for a big capsule. They can fit eight. <laughs> OK. Any other social media? Maybe one more question from social media? Sure. Um, what aspect of the training have you enjoyed most? Yeah, for me, that's that's an easy one. Uh, I enjoyed the EVA training. Yeah, for me, that's, that's an easy one. 
Um, I enjoyed spending time uh, in the suits, in the water, and it was just absolutely fantastic when you came up here. We, we weren't scheduled to have an EVA. Unfortunately, we had some problems with the station, with the cooling loop, external cooling loop, and so we had to go outside in December and fix it. And and so getting to take that training, all of that training that, that we spent down on the ground and apply it up here was, was absolutely fantastic. I think Drew, you've got a question? Hey Mike, Rick, uh, Drew down here back on Earth. I had a question, or uh, actually I was going to ask you, rather than to just floating around there s sitting, I was wondering if you could do some acrobatic tricks for us. <laughs> we, we call those stupid astronaut tricks, okay? Yeah, I could get Mike to do some tricks for you. <laughs> Sounds good. Now I got to give him a cookie or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good job. Good job. Okay. Any more social media questions? Sure. Uh, Women in the Air wants to know, how has life changed since being selected? Okay. Any for them? That's for us up here or on the ground? I think that's on the ground, on the ground. guys, but we'll, we'll get another one to you in a sec. <laughs> well, I think it's every aspect of our lives has really changed, and for, for pretty much all of us, it's just a dream come true, and it's still really difficult to believe. You know, every morning we wake up and feel like we have to pinch ourselves to think, could this dream that I had since I was five years old, how could it have actually come true? And all of us had these careers that we absolutely loved, um, before doing this and so you know it's a little bit sad to leave those careers but of course at any cost of getting our dream our days have changed entirely we all moved together to Houston and and now all became a family together which has been another huge part of it so I think really every aspect of our lives has changed but all in positive wonderful ways great hey Mike and Rick can you tell the, the students here where you're actually floating what is the module that you're currently in and what are the things around you Yeah, right now we're in the U.S. laboratory. Behind us is a uh, node two, and that's where we sleep, and that's where we uh, where we sleep at night. We each have a small crew quarters. Uh, forward of us, or after the space station, is the Russian segment. Here in the U.S. laboratory, there's a lot of different uh, science racks. We have an exercise bike to, to bike to our, our right. On our left, uh, we have a. Uh, it's a glove box, a microgravity science glove box. So there's a science experiment in there right now. We have freezers off over here. Right over the camera, again, you can't see it. We have, a, a so to speak, a galley where we get, uh, we drink, uh, get our drinking water and fill up our uh, food bags and uh, rehydrate our water, I should say. So this is a very busy place. This is kind of the center of the U.S. segment right here, this U.S. laboratory. Fantastic. Well, Mike and Rick, we're really proud of both of you, what you're doing to help advance our civilization through space travel. And you guys look really great. We wish we could be there with you, especially my ASCAN buddies wish they could be there with you. But uh, we look forward to you coming back home. Sometime soon we'll get you a nice greasy cheeseburger for you to eat when you get back home. All right. Thank you so much for this uh, time with the kids and these future explorers, our future astronauts. Give them a big round of applause, guys. And we probably have 30 seconds left for a stupid astronaut trick. <laughs> I'll hold the microphone while he does it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys look great. Thank you so much. He can't be trained. Thanks, guys.